Hey guys, uh, welcome. My name is Pam Godboyce and we're gonna do a flow today, um, or a little, a short practice really, that focuses on opening um, and kind of mobility in hips, hamstrings, and hip flexors. So kind of this whole area that we're dealing with um, when we're doing things like sitting in chairs all day. So I've had a lot of requests for this stuff, so we're um, gonna start playing with it a little. So we'll start just by coming into a comfortable seated position um, and bringing the feet out in front. So the feet come out in front, toes are just pointing straight forward, bring the hands to the knees. And we'll just take a few breaths here. Inhaling in through the nose and exhaling through the nose or through the mouth, whichever works better for you. And start to add a little spine movement in. So as we inhale, lifting through the chest, and then a little anterior tilt in the pelvis. And then as you exhale, posterior tilt. So you slide back and round through the upper back. Moving with your breath here, inhale, lift, anterior tilt. Exhale, round, posterior tilt. Inhale, lift. Exhale, round. So it looks like this. Inhale, lift. Exhale, round. Inhale, lift. Exhale, round. Inhale, come back to center. Bring the hands back behind. And let's just add in a little movement from side to side. Maybe windshield washing the hips. And you can certainly add this uh, sequence in after you've done another workout, maybe you've gone for a walk or a bike ride or um, a run, or maybe you've done one of our other uh, kind of more high intensive exercises that we have on our Balance Chaos platform or other places. I have them um, on Pow How as well. So we'll come back to center here, plant both feet, right foot, uh, our left foot plants down. We'll cross our right ankle at the left knee. Hands can come back behind, so you can lean way back here. Kind of uh, sink yourself into your shoulders. Let the arms straighten. What we're looking for is sensation in that right hip. So we're going to take the big toe and press it away. Like So I'm going to press my big toe towards you guys. I'm going to take the pinky side edge of my foot and pull it away from you guys. Like I'm trying to press not just my side of my foot this way, but also pull up. And then start to press the knee away. And as I do that, maybe I'll start to lift the chest, find a little anterior tilt. I might stay right here. So the sensation just changed in my hip, just from the movement of the foot and the activation of that outer hip muscle. I can commit a little bit more. This is all just to the degree. And this, this foot that's down could be slid out much further um, or it can come in really close. The closer it is in, the closer the chest is in, the, uh, the greater the sensation, basically. I'm going to keep the left hand where it is. We'll inhale the right arm up to the sky. Then bring the right arm across so it comes onto the foot. Maybe it's hand, maybe it's forearm, elbow, upper arm. And just take a few breaths here and finding this little twist. And so your twist might start out really gentle. Inhale to release back through center. And then lean back a little further so you can uncross. Come back up, add in a little movement. And we'll come back to the same, same here. Left ankle crosses at the right knee. I like to come back to make that happen. It just makes it a little easier on the hip. Press the big toe away. Pull the pinky side edge of the foot up. So this is called everting the foot. Press the knee uh, away from my chest. I might stay here. This side's a little tighter for me. I might walk in a little bit more. I might stay further out. I might bring the foot in further or slide the foot away.
Then the right hand will stay where it is. Inhale, left arm to the sky. Exhale as we twist over towards the left. So we're twisting away from the hip, but we're stretching just to get a little longer line. So I like to really press the knee out here, lift through the chest, almost as if I'm doing a side stretch with the left side of the body. So I'm really trying to draw the left side of the body away from the hip as I'm twisting here. We'll inhale as we release back to center, hands come back and cross the legs. Maybe add in a little wood chill washer. We'll find our way from here into down dog. So I'll rotate around, bring the hands down, and then up and back to down dog. So in my down dog, I'm going to press into the feet. Then I start to pull the feet apart so the, uh, the outer hip activates just a little. This is just to build some heat in the outer hips. And then while I'm pulling the feet apart, I'm going to move the hips a little from side to side. Maybe pedal out one and then the other. And then come back to that down dog where I'm pulling the hips apart and then float forward to plank. Imagine now that you're squeezing the feet together. Let the knees come down and press back to a child's pose. Then we'll rise back up to the table, curl the toes under, press up and back, down dog. Send the right leg back behind. Then bend the knee and wrap the hip open. So soften the standing leg just a little. Activate that foot just like we just did in that ankle to knee position. Inhale here. Exhale, set the right foot to the right thumb. The left knee comes down. Press into that front heel and inhale, sweep the arms up to the sky. So start. As you sweep the arms up to the sky, think about lengthening through the front of the body so that the hip flexor, that um, left hip flexor, starts to get a little bit. You can maybe feel a quad stretch here. Inhale. Exhale as we fold forward. Straighten the front leg and slide the hips back. So we're going to add a little flow. Inhale, slide it forward. Arms come up. Exhale, hands come down and slide it back. Inhale. Exhale, back. Inhale, up. Exhale, back. Inhale, as you slide it forward here, arms come up. Plant the hands down and step it back, down dog. Left leg comes back behind, bend the knee and wrap the hip open. So we're going to activate that foot, activate the outer hip, kick the outer edge of the heel towards the sky, inhale here, exhale, hug the knee in, and step the left foot to the left thumb. Right knee comes down, inhale, sweep the arms, find that Anjane Asana once again, feel the length through the front of the body. So it's not just kind of hanging out back here and saying, okay, I'm going to lunge, there's a lot on my back knee, really slide it forward and feel, I feel a good quad stretch in there today. Inhale, exhale, fold it forward, slide the hips back, get a little hamstring opening, inhale, slide it forward, arms up, exhale, fold, and sit it back, inhale, arms up, exhale, arms come back, hips come back. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, sit back. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, plant the hands. Step it back down, dog. Right leg comes to the sky, bend the knee and wrap the hip open. Activate here so you feel that outer hip active. Inhale, exhale, step the right foot to the right thumb. Fingertips come down here, so find that runner's lunge. The back knee can always come down if that's of better service to you. You can always be here. Press into that front heel. Let the hips drop down just a little. Let the pelvis drop down so you get so you can feel it here in the upper um, hip flexor. And then exhale, press and straighten the front leg around the spine. Inhale, slide forward, maybe even lift the chest, maybe the knee almost taps down. And then exhale, press, 
straighten the front leg, round through the spine. Inhale, thigh bone comes down, chest comes forward. Exhale, press and round. Inhale, thigh bone comes down. Exhale, press and round. We'll stay in this position here. We're gonna set the back foot forward a little so we shift the weight into the front leg a little more. And then we'll take that back foot and we're gonna cross it across, across the uh, front leg. So I just brought my foot from here shoop, to the other side of that front leg. When I come back to breathe, you should feel this in the IT band, maybe the outer hip, maybe in the outer calf. Pull that belly in, get it out of the way. Sometimes it gets in the way. When we'll come back, step it back, plant the hands down, step back to down dog, and send the left leg back behind, inhale. Bend the knee, wrap the hip open, activate the outer hip, press through the outer edge of the foot, inhale. Exhale, step it forward, find that runner's lunge. So fingertips are down, hips are kind of level with that front knee, and I have a lot of sweatshirt on today, it's kind of chilly. Hips are level. Inhale here, let the thigh bones start to come down, feel a little bit more sensation in that back thigh and lift the chest, and then exhale, press Round, straighten the front leg as much as it will go in this position, in this length. Inhale, thigh bone comes down. Exhale, press and round. Inhale, thigh bone down. Exhale, press and round. Inhale, thigh bone comes down. Exhale, press and round. We'll do one more. Inhale, thigh bone down. Exhale, press and round. And then shift forward, step the back foot in first. You're shortening your stance a little, and then we'll take this right leg, sweep it across, so it comes off the side of the mat. Most of your weight is in that front foot. Pull the belly in and up and kind of spin it across the legs, and then the torso is still going in the same direction it was before which is towards the front foot, or moving in this direction. So. <laughs> you certainly can be on blocks here, or like a step stool or a water bottle, or whatever works. So I'll shift back forward, step the right foot over to the right. And then plant the hands down. And this time, actually, we're going to step forward. So we'll soften the front knee, step it forward, and come into a chair position. As we come into a chair position, press into the heels, pull the heels apart. And maybe you want blocks, mine are over here. So I'm just going to grab them to demonstrate. We'll shift the weight onto the left foot, draw the right knee up, cross the right ankle at the left knee. So same thing we just did seated. Find that E version of that right foot. Press the knee out. Come to sit a little lower. Maybe you hang out here. Maybe you fold forward. Maybe hands come to blocks. Maybe hands hook under. Maybe hands to the ground. So this can be either just a straight up hip opener where you're using some support. You could also use a wall or a piece of furniture here. We'll inhale, pull the belly in and up, rise up, release the right foot down. Maybe you shake them out a little. Come back to that chair position, press the heels down and pull them apart. Shift the weight over to the right side, draw the left knee in and up, cross the left ankle, the right knee. It doesn't really matter what side you're on. I'm just saying it out loud so you know that I'm on the other side. And again, maybe you're coming down. This foot is not just kind of dangling here, it's pressing this way, big toes pushing away, foot's flexed in. So for some of you this could become an arm balance, right? You can 
going to move down into Alavasana. Ah, yeah. yeah. What more? You want to practice crow? Sure. <laughs> the joys of filming when your kids are at home. At least she wants to practice yoga. And then we'll release, rise back up, release your feet down. Cool, maybe you hang on to your blocks. Maybe you let go of them. We're gonna let the right foot come forward, left foot's gonna step back. Heel toe the right foot out to the right. So maybe the knee starts to drop out to the right just a little here. I'm gonna take a few breaths. Maybe you fold the back, um, the side edge in here. Just to get a little padding on the knee. And then we're gonna take the back knee, we're gonna drag it diagonally forward towards the front heel. Bend, maybe reach back and grab. I will tell you, it took me a while to figure all this out. Once you've got that foot, or maybe you're using a strap, or maybe you just do this up against a wall so that you can kick in. So you're gonna kick about 5% effort into that hand, the wall, the piece of furniture, the strap, whatever it is. And you'll feel the quad stretch. That's what we're looking for. And if you'd like to, you can do a little bit more mobility, lift the butt up, send it towards the heels a little, that's called anterior tilt in this position. And then we'll release, come around. Well, actually, it's called anterior tilt in any position. <laughs> so knee still comes out to the side a little, maybe you stay more upright, getting a little opening through the groin of that front leg. Maybe you come down onto a block. Start to kind of feel the, the goodness back here in the butt. And we're actually going to go from here. We'll heel toe that right foot across. And come into pigeon. And if pigeon doesn't work for you, you can always come into uh, where we started, that seated position with the ankle crossed over the knee. Or you can come into a, like a fire log position, the two stacked on top of each other, which stay in pigeon if that's where you are, but otherwise. This becomes, this is a fire log position. Sometimes called double pigeon or ankle to knee or maybe you're staying more upright. You just wanna be mindful of not just kind of leaning into that front knee, not collapsing the body down onto it. Especially if you have knee issues. We're pressing into the outer edge of that foot so that the ankle bone comes up. We'll take another breath or two here. And we'll shift over onto that right side. Come back and up, down dog. Step the left foot forward. Coming over to the other side, right knee comes down. You can move that left foot out to the left. In this position, Curl the toes under, back knee comes down and then drags forward. So it's like actually the moving of the skin. I'm not actually sliding myself on the um, on the ground. My knee is connected with the mat and then I pull and it moves the tissue. The right hand comes down underneath the right shoulder. Create a little external rotation. I know it's hard to see in the sweatshirt, but you can see that kind of movement that I'm doing. It's an external rotation and I'm moving away. you pull that foot in, if you send the butt back a little, grab on, kick about 5% of your effort into that hand, into that wall. So what it would look like at the wall is you might come back to here and you kicking in and then still finding that little bit of a twist as I can get. You can use the top of the foot, the toes of the foot, so I can press into that a lot without a lot of pressure on the knee because um, I'm not requiring myself to reach. So I can come a little further forward, the knee angle can change and I can still get a nice quad stretch here. And so if you're hanging on to that foot, you can slowly release it. Heel toe the front foot out so it comes to the edge of the mat. Back foot comes down. 
Maybe you come onto the ground or onto a block, maybe on the hands. Maybe allowing that left knee to drop out towards the left just a little bit more. And then slowly we'll come up, come up onto the hands off the forearms, heel toe that left foot across, <laughs> stepping on things. And then pressing into the outer edge of the foot so I'm not sickling the ankle, pressing in even though the foot's pointed. And I invite you in Pigeon to, once you've got the foundation of the position, the knee's comfortable and you're pressing in the ankle bones up, you can like walk to the right, you can walk to the left, you can add a little twist, you can come right to the center, you can pull forward as you reach back. It's all about what sensation you're looking for, but it's the activating of that front foot. So if I, without the upper body, move the upper body out of it, if I press down into that front foot, I pop up. That's the activation that's happening here. It doesn't have to be to that degree, but that's the activation. And then maybe I bring my back knee down, but the foot stays curled under, so I have a little bit of activation in that leg as well. And then slowly we'll roll onto that left hip. Roll around once you're ready. Come back to seated. Bring the soles of the feet together, and this is what I do with the kids, and I do kids yoga. Stop your butterfly. If you were in my kids' yoga class, I'd ask you what color your butterfly is. So maybe your butterfly is something sparkly and beautiful, rainbowy. That's all cool. And that is it for today, guys. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, please shoot them to me and I will do my best to answer them. And if you have any requests at any area of the body that you'd like uh, to work on strengthening or opening, uh, please let me know and I will do my best to get a video together for you. Thanks so much. Namaste.